Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we are going to learn about the volume of three-dimensional surfaces obtained by revolving two-dimensional laminas. Wow, that's a long title. Okay, so as always, we start with the function y equal to f of x. I convinced you for a long time, many, many real-life applications change into functions and of course functions in turn will change into graphs so let's say our function has a graph like this in the previous videos we learned how to calculate the area from one point to the next point in the function or rather that is called area under the curve and then we learned how to calculate the length rectification the length of a part of a curve and in today's video what we plan is we learn how to revolve the lamina and how to obtain the um, volume and even the surface area in the coming videos okay so first of all you imagine i am going to consider the part from x equal to a to x equal to b and now i want you to revolve clockwise or counterclockwise around the x-axis so what happens is a reflection uh, you can imagine something like this on this side okay and at every point circles will be formed i think you can see those circles at this point another circle will be there Anyway, a three-dimensional shape will be generated. I am not able to draw all the circles, but you can use your imagination. Okay, to make this picture very clear, I will play two videos for you. Okay, so we have the three-dimensional system. And I think you can see our x-axis and y-axis. And we have the ellipse. Now what I'm planning to do is I'm going to revolve it. Uh, I cannot show each and every degree, but I'm moving through 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 degrees. To be honest, you should move across 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, every degree. That's 60 degree. And again, I'm revolving. I'm revolving. Again, revolving. And I think now you're able to see a three-dimensional structure. Now, I should have done like what you call 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree, 4 degree, 5 degree. Then you will be able to see the structure even more clearly. If I take 0 0.1 degree, 0 0.2 degree, 0 0.3 degree, the structure will be even smooth. So what I am trying to convince you here is by revolving an ellipse. Ellipse is a two-dimensional figure and that red colored line is the x-axis and it looks like a watermelon. There is a three-dimensional surface. I'm sure you're able to see a three-dimensional surface. And once we have a three-dimensional surface, we are curious about two things. What is the volume inside that surface? And what is the surface area? And that is exactly the plan in the coming videos. Okay, now that's enough. Now I'll show you another thing. That is revolving a quarter circle. Now look at this. Red is the x-axis, y-axis and the blue is the z-axis. So what I did is I took a quarter circle. I think you can see that circle. Now the same thing. I am revolving through 0 degree, 1 degree, 2 degree, etc, etc. But I am showing only the standard angles. By the way, can you guess what will be the shape after revolution? Oh, a hemisphere. Are you able to see that hemisphere? Yeah, that's nice. That's really nice. I think you are able to see that hemisphere. So what I'm trying to convince you here is by revolving two dimensional laminas, we are able to obtain three dimensional surfaces. Are you able to understand that part? Okay, now let's move on to our lesson. So what we did here is we are, um, what do you call, creating many, 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 many circles. But if you look at that closely, very closely, you can see that 
the radius of the circle is nothing but the function value at that point. The radius of each circle will be the function value at that point. Is that clear? So once more I'll tell you, we have the x-axis, the y-axis. And let's say we have a graph of a function like this. And let's call the function to be f of x. And I told you, when you revolve this around the x-axis, when you revolve this around the x-axis, let's say between x equal to a and x equal to b, a three-dimensional structure will be formed. And at every point, at, uh, basically, if you cut, 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 cut that structure, you will be able to see circles at each and every point which correspond to the function value. At each and every point, you will be able to see a circle. And that circle will be nothing but a circle with radius, the function value. Okay, so now I am not going to make the uh, theory so complicated. So if you want the volume, all you have to do is you have to integrate from A to B. Pi into function value squared because pi r square will be the area of every circle. But r is actually the function value and the function value is y. So pi y square into dx because every circle can be considered as a small cylinder. Anyway, this is the formula. Okay, now as always, let's try this and let's find the volume of something using a two-dimensional lamina. Let's for the, go for the simplest one first. So please write, find the volume of a spear. So look at the question, find the volume of a spear. Spear is in three dimension. By revolving the standard circle x square plus y square equal to a square about the x axis. Okay, so what I do is I'm going to draw the x axis, the y axis. And next I'm going to take the circle. Okay, so we have the standard circle. Now, uh, I'm going to make a suggestion. Let's forget about the second quadrant and third quadrant. That means we'll consider only, I just showed you how a spear, hemisphere will be formed if you revolve only a quarter circle. So we'll erase everything else and we'll consider only this much. And this is x equal to zero and this is x equal to a. And this is part of the circle, x square plus y square equal to a square. So we write required volume equal to when you revolve this, what will you get? Think about it. If you revolve this part, what will you get? Yeah, you'll get a hemisphere. You'll get something like this. You'll keep on forming circles. I think that, fig that picture itself was satisfactory for you. So you can uh, understand how you'll get a hemisphere. Okay. So required volume equal to 2 times the volume formed in the first quadrant. Now that's too easy. The formula is integral pi y square dx. And x varies from 0 to a. Now y square means, what is y square? You look at the board please and tell me. Yeah. So 2 into integral x equal to 0 to a pi into, what is y square? Yeah, a square minus x square. And this pi will come common in the x equal to 0 to a, a square minus x square dx. And that will be equal to 2 pi. If you integrate a square with respect to x, we get a square into x. And x square integrated gives you x cubed by 3 within the limits x equal to 0 to a. Now plug in upper limit. Instead of x, you can plug in the upper limit and we get 2 pi and a square a cube minus a cube by 3 minus 0 minus 0. And that will be 2 pi, 2 by 3 a cube. So the answer is 4 by 3 pi a cube. That's it. I'm sure that you remember the volume of a sphere is 4 by 3 pi radius. Look at this. 
is in the same answer so the summary of today's class is by revolving two dimensional laminas we can generate three dimensional surface and once we have a three dimensional surface you can imagine a bottle you can imagine a cone a spear etc etc there are two things which we need to measure one is the volume the capacity and second is the surface area that means if you cut open the surface make it into square square squares how many square units and that is the volume today we are learning only the volume the volume is given by a simple formula integral the required part which we are planning to revolve pi y square dx and y square will be obtained from the equation and we try to find the volume of a sphere and wow it turned out to be exact so i hope you enjoyed today's video so please like share and subscribe i'll be back with more videos so till then my friends bye